warm welcome. We have Miss Hamsa Venu Gopal. So we have next up the second panelist, Miss Priya Anand from Mount Litera to join us on stage. Can we have a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Priya Anand as she joins us on stage for the panel discussion. Next up, joining the panelists is Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Sinha from Jain International Residential School. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Sinha. On the panel, we also have Dr. Vidya Saraswati. Dr. Vidya Saraswati is an alumni of Os Osmania University with a MA, MPhil and PhD. Her school education was in St. George's Grammar School where her mother, Mrs. Vijayam, was the principal. Her father, Professor Vijayam, was a professor in geology in Osmania University. The desire to pursue her career in the field of education came to her naturally and she put in her best effort to fulfill this dream right from her student years. Dr. Saraswati was a president, guide and an NSS worker as well as a student leader throughout her student years. Dr. Saraswati started her teaching career at Little Flower Boys Junior College and thereafter moved on to St. Francis College for Women, one of the premium institutions in Hyderabad, Telangana. She was granted a UGC fellowship and pursued her dream of achieving doctorate in English literature. So let's, with a huge round of applause, welcome on stage Dr. Vidya Sravanti. Right. Moving on, last but not the least, we have Dr. D. Usha Reddy, CEO of Meridian Group of Schools. So she is a renowned educationist in Hyderabad and alumnus of Rishi Valley School, Jiddu Krishnamurti Foundation. Her perspective on education focuses on inner transformation. Endowed with exceptional leadership qualities, she was the chairperson of Hyderabad Sahodaya Schools Complex, a conglomerate of 200 CBSE schools. As a CBSE master trainer, she has mentored over 800 educators, encouraging collaboration and exchange of best practices. She promotes holistic development through academic excellence and students' participation in sports, science, art and literary events where students have won accolades. So let's welcome Dr. Usha Reddy with a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. With that, I would request the panelists to kindly take their seats. And the stage is over to Dr. Usha Reddy now to take the panel discussion ahead. And I assure the audience that we're going to make this a nano session because we're delayed. And we also have one of our panelists who has to catch a flight. So we'll make sure that it is crisp and I hope they're going to be some great takeaways. The national education policy, as we all know, is a humongous drive in our country, bringing about a lot of change. We understand that there's been a lot of deliberation regarding the ifs and buts of will it succeed or not. But I think right here as educators, we all know what we ought to do what we must do and we have to bring about this change. So the topic that they've given us is to see are the changes actually happening in our schools? So I'll begin with this question to each of the panelists to see what are the changes that they've brought about in their institutions that are driving change to ensure that NEP 2020 is a success and will slowly but surely make drastic changes in the future of education in India. So I would like to begin with Mr. Rohan, uh, you know, who will give his views on this topic first. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I know it's been a long day, so like ma'am said, we'll try to keep it as crisp. Um, so I have a, a question for the audience, or not really a question. So I want to, to state a problem statement. I think the biggest problem that the whole world is talking about right now in my opinion is three things. One is climate change, one is rising costs, and the third is employability. I think after reading the NEP document, 
what we are able to definitely see is that the government directly or indirectly is working towards at least solving these problems which the world is seeing uh, you know everywhere um, to pick up on a few things from from the document you know something like vocational training which has been introduced in the in the NEP document uh, you know we had in the existing system of education you have uh, standardized examinations for standardized subjects that students take uh, through the year and then you have examination on that instead you know with the vocational training now coming in uh, children at a young age can start picking up certain professions which they feel that they're good at or even if to get their try their hands at something and if it you know if something that they can make a career out of um, India Indians have always been good at having certain skill sets but what we have not been able to do well which the world over has been able to do is to show the utility of that skill sets so this vocational training in my opinion will definitely help to make sure Indians are able to uh, you know showcase their talents and use that uh, you know as a tool for being employed in the near future then you look at uh, environment uh, environmental concerns if you look at the broader picture it's all about sustainability um, you know NEP document now is starting to talk about how we can use or how we can create curriculum which can help for the younger generation to understand how the world needs to be sustainable how we need to be more understanding of the people uh, living in our society and that is something that the NEP document will also help us to do um, the last point that I did uh, want to touch upon was with regard to the entire holistic development of the child. Um, we genuinely feel that gone are the days where you know we can produce doctors, engineers in bulk and they will be available for large corporate organizations to absorb them. I don't think that is going to be the way forward. Um, people will have to find different skill sets and they have to learn to develop their skill sets and the easiest and the most simplest way to do that is through uh, you know things like interdisciplinary learning since ma'am mentioned I would just like to take a minute to explain you know something uniquely that we're doing at Redbridge International Academy is that we are promoting children um, to learn for every year a different skill set and every student in the school sort of takes part in that this year something that we're doing is we are we're encouraging children to take up art and you know to showcase that art can be used as a career we're actually doing a gallery show uh, you know over the weekend in a gallery and we're trying to show that children can you know make pieces of art and then use it and you sell that and then use that to uh, you know progress their uh, career so that's just one of the examples that we are doing at Red Bridge ma'am wonderful I think it's very important that you know the kind of education that we are delivering not just in schools but at university level ensures that you know they are employable and I think once that skill is there I think uh, you know India will have a great future having concern for the environment again you know it's a value system now that you know all of us must embed into our school system and into our children so I think uh, thank you for those inputs so, uh, Dr. Uh, Ms. Vidya, I'd like you to share your views on the topic and what is it that you're doing different in your schools that you weren't doing earlier, but because of NEP, you've changed subtly and you feel it's going to impact the future. Yes. Uh, good evening uh, to everyone present here. And uh, yes, Usha, uh, today I think it's been a long wait for us and NEP has brought in a new thought, a new focus into the entire education sector. Children are speaking about it, teachers, the management, parents, everyone's, uh, you know, much, I think, uh, uh, excited about NEP. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of a framework, as we know, which is going to bring tr great transformation into the education sector, which is much awaited. Also, it is going to inspire many youngsters to do something different. Uh, it's a way forward plan that the country has given us and I'm sure every educator, every parent is interested to see that we look forward to that in the next few years. Uh, well, having said that, uh, let me say that 
in many of the schools in the cities especially and in the urban areas we do understand how to implement NEP into our current processes and I think many international schools already have established certain ways and methods of you know uh, implementing this kind of uh, uh, you know including experiential learning activity based learning for the little ones more of uh, creating knowledge um, uh, and as we very well know because of the digital uh, platforms that are now available uh, there is the societies have become more knowledge based and it's not just information but how to use the information is now the focus so the entire education system is moving away from not just the content but how to uh, you know take it forward and skill based learning as we very well know uh, so i would say that there are two things that we can see one is education is much more enjoyable and number two is it is much more productive uh, if we can consider it in these two different angles and of course india is has to be in pace with the current trends the current times uh, because we know as a world, uh, you know, we are far behind in our methods of learning uh, and student-teacher interactions are very minimal. If we can still look at the um, traditional methods, I think in many schools, if they're still following the traditional methods, that would not really help students learning. Students need to be much more empowered and they get much more empowered if they have more choices and if there is more flexibility. So in our school, uh, at Reckleford International School in Hyderabad, uh, what we have seen to it is that we've seen that the little ones, because post-COVID, when children started to come back to school, we know that they were much more closed, they were not yet open and willing and ready. So all learning had to happen without the textbook, at least up to the age of seven-year-old, six to seven-year-old. Because if the textbook is the main focus, then the learning doesn't happen. Because children cannot really connect <coughs> And I assure the audience that we're going to make this a nano session because we're delayed. And we also have one of our panelists who has to catch a flight. So we'll make sure that it is crisp and I hope there are going to be some great takeaways. The national education policy, as we all know, is a humongous drive in our country, bringing about a lot of change. We understand that there's been a lot of deliberation regarding the ifs and buts of will it succeed or not. But I think right here, as educators, we all know what we ought to do, what we must do, and we have to bring about this change. So the topic that they've given us is to see, are the changes actually happening in our schools? So I'll begin with this question to each of the panelists to see what are the changes that they've brought about in their institutions that are driving change to ensure that NEP 2020 is a success and will slowly but surely make drastic changes in the future of education in India. So I would like to begin with Mr. Rohan, uh, you know, who will give his views on this topic first. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I know it's been a long day, so like ma'am said, we'll try to keep it as crisp. Um, so I have a, a question for the audience, or not really a question, so I want to, to state a problem statement. I think the biggest problem that the whole world is talking about right now, in my opinion, is three things. One is climate change, one is rising costs, and the third is employability. I think after reading the NEP document, what we are able to definitely see is that the government, directly or indirectly, is working towards at least solving these problems which the world is seeing, uh, you know, everywhere. Um, to pick up on a few things from, from the document, you know, something like vocational training which has been introduced in the, in the NEP document. Uh, you know, we had in the existing system of education, you have uh, standardized examinations for standardized subjects that students take uh, through the year and then you have examination on that. Instead, you know, with the vocational training now coming in, uh, children at a young age can start picking up certain professions which they feel that they're good at, or even if to get their, try their hands at something, and if it, you know, if something that they can make a career out of. Um, India, Indians have always been good at having certain skill sets, but what we have not been able to do well, which the world over has been able to do, is to show 
the utility of that skill sets. So this vocational training, in my opinion, will definitely help to make sure Indians are able to, uh, you know, showcase their talents and use that, uh, you know, as a tool for being employed in the near future. Then you look at uh, environment, uh, environmental concerns. If you look at the broader picture, it's all about sustainability. Um, you know, NEP document now is starting to talk about how we can use or how we can create curriculum which can help for the younger generation to understand how the world needs to be sustainable, how we need to be more understanding of the people uh, living in our society. And that is something that the NEP document will also help us to do. Um, the last point that I did uh, want to touch upon was with regard to the entire holistic development of the child. Um, we genuinely feel that gone are the days where you know we can produce doctors, engineers in bulk and they will be available for large corporate organizations to absorb them. I don't think that is going to be the way forward. Um, people will have to find different skill sets and they have to learn to develop their skill sets. And the easiest and the most simplest way to do that is through, uh, you know, things like interdisciplinary learning. Since ma'am mentioned, I would just like to take a minute to explain, you know, something uniquely that we're doing at Redbridge International Academy is that we are promoting children um, to learn for every year a different skill set and every student in the school sort of takes part in that. This year something that we're doing is we are, we're encouraging children to take up art and you know to showcase that art can be used as a career. We're actually doing a gallery show uh, you know over the weekend in a gallery and we're trying to show that children can you know make pieces of art and then use it and you sell that and then use that to uh, you know progress their uh, career. So that's just one of the examples that we are doing at Red Bridge, ma'am. Wonderful. I think it's very important that, you know, the kind of education that we are delivering, not just in schools, but at university level, ensures that, you know, they're employable. And I think once that skill is there, I think, uh, you know, India will have a great future. Having concern for the environment again, you know, it's a value system now that, you know, all of us must embed into our school system and into our children. So I think, uh, thank you for those inputs. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Ms. Vidya, I'd like you to share your views on the topic and what is it that you're doing different in your schools that you weren't doing earlier, but because of NEP, you've changed subtly and you feel it's going to impact the future. Yes. Uh, good evening uh, to everyone present here. And uh, yes, Usha, uh, today I think it's been a long wait for us and NEP has brought in a new thought, a new focus into the entire education sector. Children are speaking about it, teachers, the management, parents, everyone's, uh, you know, much, I think, uh, uh, excited about NEP. Uh, and uh, this is a kind of a framework, as we know, which is going to bring tr great transformation into the education sector, which is much awaited. Also, it is going to inspire many youngsters to do something different. Uh, it's a way forward plan that the country has given us and I'm sure every educator, every parent is interested to see that. We look forward to that in the next few years. Uh, well, having said that, uh, let me say that in many of the schools in the cities especially and in the urban areas, we do understand how to implement NEP into our current processes. And I think many international schools already have established certain ways and methods of, uh, you know, uh, implementing this kind of, uh, uh, you know, including experiential learning, activity-based learning for the little ones, more of uh, creating knowledge. Um, uh, and as we very well know, because of the digital uh, platforms that are now available, uh, there is the societies have become more knowledge-based. And it's not just information, but how to use the information is now the focus. So the entire education system is moving away from not just the content, but how to, uh, you know, take it forward and skill-based learning as we very well know. Uh, so I would say that there are two things that we can see. One is education is much more enjoyable and number two is it is much more productive uh, if we can consider it in these two different angles. And of course, India is, has to be in pace with the current trends, the current times. 
because we know as a world, uh, you know, we are far behind in our methods of learning uh, and student-teacher interactions are very minimal. If we can still look at the um, traditional methods, I think in many schools, if they're still following the traditional methods, that would not really help students learning. Students need to be much more empowered and they get much more empowered if they have more choices and if there is more flexibility. So in our school, uh, at Reckleford International School in Hyderabad, uh, what we have seen to it is that we've seen that the little ones, because post-COVID, when children started to come back to school, we know that they were much more closed, they were not yet open and willing and ready. So all learning had to happen without the textbook, at least up to the age of seven-year-old, six to seven-year-old. Because if the textbook is the main focus, then the learning doesn't happen. Because children cannot really connect with the textbook. I think post-COVID, it was a much more challenging time because uh, students, many of them had forgotten to read a textbook, read a book as such. Uh, maybe they are used to only seeing images, seeing videos in their cell phones or on the TV screen or a computer screen. So the way and the approach of learning to engage them was a big challenge. So we have seen to it that the textbook is not the focus and coming to the middle and the high school level too, engaging children in more and more, uh, you know, um, practical methods of learning or uh, every topic, it needed to be at least going through a video or going through a worksheet or through some experimentation or through a project. So we had a different plan set up. Uh, for at least up to the month of the first term examination that was in the month of October so that uh, students can enjoy what they learn and then writing becomes the last in our priority as we all know because listening, speaking, reading, all this becomes much more important and writing comes later. But then we should remember that according to the NEP, there is a uh, a kind of future focus when the board examination would not be, uh, you know, uh, external board examination. Uh, that is the future plan, maybe after 2024 and 25 and so on. But then right now, since there is the board examination, the board children still need to be writing uh, and they need to be in the process. So anyway, there is some kind of changes that we had to implement to see that, you know, the learning happens because learning should happen. What is the outcome is much more important, the learning outcome, rather than the, you know, systematic and the traditional method or something that we implement in the learning process at school. Thank you. Wonderful. So I think few changes that you brought about, especially up to grade two, is where because of the learning gap due to COVID, you've actually done away with uh, textbooks, made, made it more hands-on and experiential. So that's very nice because we all understand that experiential le learning and as per David Cobb's, uh, you know, systems, you know, everybody is starting to implement it in a more systematic way than before. So you begin with the concrete, move on to the reflective, then you move to the abstract, and then you get to the active learning part. And once that cycle is completed, I think they get an entire experience about that topic, which is so important. So, Mr. Sanjeev, what is your take on the topic, please? Uh, uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And uh, I thank Education Today for bringing me here. Uh, I would like to discuss on, uh, from 20 to 22, these two years, what, uh, the progress of NEP in terms of CBSC. I, I come from a CBSC school. Uh, when we go back to the policy, 2005 NCF, National Curriculum Framework 2005, if you see the bullet points of 2005, it speaks about constructivism, it speaks about experiential learning, it speaks about project-based learning, it speaks about linking mathematics with day-to-day -day life. That was the, the, those are the core of NCF 2005 and these 15 years and almost now we are going to be 17 years in 2020 again a new do document has come. The new document has added all these points because I feel those 15 years to change the education system which uh, what rot learning from rot learning to active learning ch child centric method 15 years is not enough I think. It, take, it will take generations. CBSE being a, one of the massive board of India, it has a it has very good approach. 
and it is every day it is coming up with one other being a cv cvsc principal principals you must you must be agree with me whenever early morning you open up your the cvscsiksha.com mail you get a circular and that circular tells how to engage a child there are some of the some of the core things one is uh, diksha that's a open open source which uh, which has been massively which has become what uh, more around there are 8673 courses are there in that diksha app and it is promoted by ncert this app uh, through this uh, it's an open resource app anyone can contribute to it at the same time anyone can gain knowledge from it and uh, around there are 16 crore enrollments were done till now 16 crore enrollments for different courses are done you, you can think about the population it is equal to population of some of the countries out of these 16 crore en enrollments 13 crore people have completed their courses from 13 13 available yes i do accept that certain things uh, didn't go too well and then you know we're back to where we began yeah. but i think it's all in our hands we have nobody to blame so if all of us are doing it i think uh, with our hearts and doing it correctly and not just being loose with whatever we're doing or not uh, you know responsible then i think the issue lies there and i'm sure that as educators we understand you know why it's important to have a holistic report card and we will take that you know forward so if you look at the cnbc uh, report also you find that you know when you look at our um, higher institutions we only have three of us that ranked in the top 200 in the country so i'd like to hear from you you know that you know what role does research play because only now we've got a fund for research at university level earlier on we all know the kind of research done in india was a lot of cut paste nobody bothered about plagiarism and things like that so i think the quality just wasn't there the fun to research wasn't there you know and at school level how do we build that skill in children so that when they go to university they will do well because my observation is that you know somebody was showing a picture in the morning of the top ceos indians across the globe and they all didn't come from very funda schools they even came from normal schools but see where they are so what would, what's your take on that sir no i absolutely agree with you dr usha i think um, one of india's biggest uh, resource has to be uh, their people and the trend over the past few decades have been good talent has been moving out of the country going to foreign universities while we very proudly say that top ceos are all indian origin but most of them don't have indian passports so i think that's a change that will come about i think research based learning and uh, research oriented uh, learning is extremely important in that regard uh, because at the end of the day uh, whatever uh, you know problems are there in our existing societies if you are not trying to find the solution within our country then all these talented resources are all going to leave the country and by creating that at a very early age and ensuring that students are able to uh, you know at least develop that skill set as to how to do research i think will change and transform the education system dramatically in the future so fantastic um i think uh, you know i got a lot of inputs from the panelists here i'd like to thank each one of them and i hope the audience too got some inputs and i know that you know for the country to get better it all lies in our hands so let's take that responsibility let's concentrate on teacher training because no matter what we talk it's the teachers who drive the change in the class and what happens in the classrooms of today will definitely change the future of our country tomorrow thank you so much thank you thank you so much to all the panelists for sharing their inputs and now i would request mr anil sharma to kindly join us on stage to felicitate the panelists So ladies and gentlemen that was the third and the final panel discussion for today's conference which revolved around the NEP policies and how are they successfully changing the dynamics of academics in India and we did hear some valuable inputs and feedbacks from our panelists and also appreciate the audience for patiently 
sticking together with us and next up we after this we will be moving ahead with the next set of awards just before we start the awards a reminder to all the awardees to please do share bites near at the media booth which is right outside the ballroom so please do share how you feel after receiving the award and also education today celebrates their 10th anniversary so you can share a few words of that as well and we would love to hear from you Thank you so much to all the panelists and thank you Mr. Anil Sharma for joining us on stage to felicitating them. Moving on, next up we